in three. Hello and welcome to Changemakers with me, Paul O'Keefe. In this episode, I speak with Susan Wanji from Tangaza University in Kenya. Susan and I met last year through mutual friends in Kakuma refugee camp when we were both assisting on various education for development initiatives. Since then, we have been meeting regularly to discuss community-based cohesion and grassroots development in Kenya. Susan is currently a lecturer, researcher, and mentor at the Institute for Social Transformation in Tangaza University, and has a wealth of experience working in development with underrepresented and marginalized communities in Kenya. Susan, thank you for joining us today. Can you maybe start by telling me a little bit about your experience working in development in Kenya? Thank you very much. Much, uh, Paul, for having me, and it is an honor to share with you and also the name of uh, university on various interventions that I've been working with. In essence, I look at uh, development, uh, you know, uh, from the aspect of uh, bringing and intervening uh, in terms of change, and I've been involved in different projects and especially working with urban informal settlement. So I started off working as a volunteer. I was working uh, with the Brother of Sacred Heart. Largely, my role was to work with these young children uh, who came in to get support from brothers. And in it, as we worked together, as we collaborated, I realized that um, there was a gap in terms of education, many of these young children who are coming in will not transfer uh, to secondary education. And um, I started off an initiative of looking for opportunities that could enhance them to transit to secondary education, but also to guide them in their education. So I was involved in <clears throat> resource mobilization. Mm -hmm and also mentorship program. We know that uh, children who are coming from urban informal settlement, many will not have mentors or models who can enable them, you know, like they look up to. But with this kind of project, I was, we were able to see many of the girls, especially who were my target, um, managing uh, to, you know, uh, to get to secondary school mm -hmm. and also transit to university. I see. So yep. that was mm -hmm. one aspect that I would say I've, I was involved in terms of development. Mm -hmm. Others have been uh, addressing issues of livelihood uh, with the same people mm -hmm. and uh, looking at uh, those uh, women who okay. we were dealing with as their parent or guardian. Okay, I see. Now, now you spoke a little bit about. Um, mentor or mentoring you know that transition from primary to secondary school um especially um I, I think for young girls this is very important can you tell us a little bit about some of the issues that are specific to uh young girls at this age when they're maybe um from the urban areas when they're transitioning from say primary school and hoping to go to secondary school and how you as a development worker maybe facilitated that tr transition. Thank you. Many of these come from, you know, a, a poverty background or, you know, economic background is uh, quite wanting. So we would see many who could not afford uh, even sanitary pads, therefore this opportunity to mobilize for such so that they can be able to be retained because mm -hmm. we have the challenge of girls who will not get to uh, be consistent in school because of the challenge of menstrual uh, hygiene and uh, and such also you realize that um uh, because of poverty again will miss out on glasses mm -hmm. they have not been able to pay free uh, uh, can we free period? The requirement of some money that is required for development. And we have such girls who will not be able to 
pay up for this. Okay. So, so those would be like the main thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so really at that crit critical point in their lives, uh, the issue of poverty prevents them from, from maybe um, continuing in their education. Um, how do you think that uh, development initiatives, such as the ones that you've worked in, have transformed local communities and, and especially the lives of local girls? One, the provision of education becomes very important because mm -hmm. through education, they are able to have opportunities that uh, can see them through in mm -hmm. terms of competition and get even to the job market. Mm -hmm. Again, offering them mentorship that they require uh, where you'll be able to guide them on issues related to health mm -hmm. <coughs> reproductive issues. Mm -hmm. That becomes very important. Uh, for them. So they are able to build their awareness, self-image, and this is quite important, and especially from the that come from. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the communities that they come from, um, they, they need the support from, from development initiatives, I guess. Um, now, what about your current role at Tangaza University? Uh, what, what areas are you working in? What, what projects are you hoping to develop? So currently at Tangaza University College, I'm teaching in the Institute for Social Transformation, um, really in issues of gender and development, community development. Mm -hmm. Teaching, you know, being the student class, I'm also involved in the internship program where our students, when they are out uh, for placement, we are able to walk and journey with them. One of my role is to, you know, ensure that uh, I get to hear how they are integrating what they have learned in class uh, with what is in the field. So mm. there will be weekly meeting where I to meet them and they share like, their experiences. Besides that, I'm um, involved uh, currently, I'm most involved with other re research related activity mm -hmm. uh, on issues of environment and the ecological justice. Mm -hmm. I see. So we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. So it's it's quite it's quite interesting that you know you you work directly with the communities and you bring your students from the university out into the community. What uh, difficulties and and what opportunities come from that interaction between your students and the local communities that you work with? I see there are many opportunities, and especially for uh, what. Uh, uh, having them, you know, easily being absorbed in the job market mm -hmm. uh, because this network that we form, this collaboration that we form becomes an avenue that can help them even as they complete, uh, complete their degrees. Uh, one of the challenges I'm saying uh, would be the expectations that the community sometimes have mm -hmm. uh, as these students who are in for their internship. Some mm -hmm. of the communities that we'll be dealing with would be expecting maybe support in terms of monetary or even, you know, uh, other opportunities. So uh, getting feedback from my student, it's like, you know, there's so much that the community is, is expecting from me. Mm -hmm. But anyway, largely our preparation is to enable them to see how they can develop this community so that if there are projects that they can start for the community to become sustainable, the better mm -hmm. for them. We've seen such students uh, starting the grassroots initiative mm -hmm. that now uh, is able, to, you know, to address some of the challenges, say issues of poverty, issues of uh, lack of education. Some have gone to the uh, extent of even establishing institution uh, that can accommodate all those challenges that we are we are seeing. And it is, you know, it's a, it's such a good thing to mm -hmm. see what our students are able to or is that they are able to intervene in the community, the grassroots initiatives. Mm -hmm. 
Wonderful. Yeah, I think I think that's really, really important. Um, what you mentioned about managing the expectations of the local communities and also of the students as well and managing that relationship as as a mentor, you must have, uh, I think, a lot of um, patience and a lot of communication skills to, to make sure you're not uh, over promising or to make sure that you're delivering on what you said you delivered and that your students aren't, uh, you know, maybe causing some issues in the communities that you work in. So I, I think it's very important that that we remember that our role, I think, as development um, say workers or people who work in development is a, is a lot of the time to work with the communities not to not to come in and 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 bring our ideas but but to develop ideas together and I, I know that that's what you you do a lot in your work that you work with the communities to to develop ideas um now how do you think that academia so researchers people like myself teaching overseas or you know around the world how can we maybe contribute more to grassroots development initiatives, such as the ones you, you work with? Mm -hmm. uh, we know that the, team, uh, the main role of university or academia is you know, teaching and mm. uh, uh, research. But besides teaching and research, we are called upon to work with community and especially to see ways we can be able to face the challenges that are there mm -hmm. and therefore academia becomes very a, a key component in terms of development because they are able to bring in their knowledge their expertise uh, to the development of uh, communities they are able to collaborate and work with the community different projects that are there also able to you know to give their wisdom their expertise their direction yeah and for such, uh, maybe for the young guys, like you're talking about, we become models, mentors, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that becomes a key role of academia, a key role of uh, uh, educators uh, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, community, but also the issues uh, or the aspect of starting a grassroots initiative that uh, benefits the community. Sometimes it will be even facilitating uh, through the, f the funding that may be facilitating uh, mm. establishment of, of or seeing best initiative can take forward. I see. I see a lot of you know, collaboration between communities mm. and academia. Mm. Okay, yes, I, I think it's really, really key. The, the, the future of collaboration between the communities and the universities really working together um, it is the way things are going, and are are you hopeful for the future of these kind of academic development initiatives in Kenya? Do you see them improving in the future? Yes, I see this uh, yeah, uh, much more role of university becoming in much more pronounced. Uh, where now we appreciate that there is something that the community has to offer. Mm -hmm. to academia, but the academia has a space in the community. We have about, and especially if you look at the agenda 2063, what mm -hmm. is the role of, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, what is the role of university in terms of even the indigenous knowledge system? How mm -hmm. can we harness that? If you're talking about uh, the doctors, mm -hmm. and the medical practitioners who have a lot of indigenous knowledge, how can we be able to bring them on board Mm -hmm. you know, with their experience, the expertise and all that. So I really see and I, you know, I, I look at a future where a greater collaboration between academia and the community is becoming much more pronounced. Wonderful. And for yourself, what, what future plans do you have for development initiatives? Uh, Still in the same space that I'll become, you know, that channel or engaging my student in terms mm -hmm. of uh, addressing community challenge. Mm -hmm. I'm now much more keen in issues of uh, ecology, ecological justice, and we uh, we have recently, you know, been discussing on projects that we can work with uh, for the community. You know, how mm -hmm. can uh, Tanzania University 
be involved in greening of uh, schools and uh, mm -hmm. making the you know uh, people become much more aware on the crisis that we have you know uh, we have the major crisis of uh, the climate crisis mm -hmm. so how am i going to bring my expertise uh, mm -hmm. to the community how am i going to harness all that we have uh, mm -hmm. to help the community become even much more sustainable so mm -hmm. yes I, I am geared and I look forward to working with community much more and mm -hmm. having even much more other collaboration coming on board. Yes, and I, I hope we continue our, our discussions on community cohesion in, in refugee populations in, in, in Kenya. I think that that's, that's a very key uh, area that needs to be developed more. So I hope I'll be able to continue uh, developing ideas with you around that. Thank you so much for talking to us today. It's been really, really interesting to hear about your work and your, your thoughts on development in Kenya. And um, I just want to say thanks again and wish you very best. Thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to more collaboration and discussing such um, topics together. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.